Hi there, my name's Simon and welcome to another video where I'm going to share some hints and tips for using OBS in your online teaching through Skype or through Zoom. In this video I want to introduce two different ways that you can write or annotate or comment on materials that you're using. So for example, if you've got a PDF document, and let me just bring one across, such as this one here, then you can use the commenting tools in the PDF document in order to annotate the answers. So if I open them up here, then you can see them appear just above my head. Let's just minimize that. If I cl click on T there for text, I can start writing in answers to the gap fill exercise. And I've got a number of other different tools up here that I can use to annotate the document in different ways. So I'll leave you to play with that. The good thing about this on the PDF is, is that it moves with the text. So you can go to a different question, you can go to a different part of the page. If I select the hand tool here, I can move across onto the different page here and I can start talking about something else. And then I can go back and I can say, aha, oh, do you remember this answer here? And the lesson continues. So PDF has got a lot of functionality for annotating, making comments, writing in the answers, etc. But what if you're not working on a PDF? So let's minimize that and bring in a JPEG. This is a JPEG of a document, uh, of a, something that you might be working on and you don't have the tools to comment on it. So what can you do? Well, there are some uh, virtual whiteboard markers out there or virtual whiteboard pens. This is one of such pens. This is called Epic Pen, and this allows you to write on the screen. So if I select the pen tool, I choose the size of the pen that I want. I can choose the color here. So I've got four different colors available to use and I can start writing in my answers. Now this does involve a little bit of mouse, mouse control, so it is a bit kind of wonky. It takes a bit of getting used to. If you had a proper pen mouse, then this would be a lot easier, but if you've just got a normal mouse like I have, then it does make your writing a little bit wonky, as I said, but it does allow you to annotate the, another document. The one thing that you've got, to, or the couple of things that you've got to be aware of is that this does not move with the document. So if I move the document around, then my answer stays exactly where it is, which can be a little bit of a nuisance. The other thing that you've got to get used to is the interface. So if I'm using the pen tool and I'm writing in some answers, for example, X, Y, Z, and then I want to move the page around, then I have to remember to click on the cursor tool in order to move the page around. So you have to go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. So there is a little bit of a learning curve to using Epic Pen, but it does come into its own when you are using other documents. So not just JPEGs, but for example, if I'm working on a BBC story, um, then I've got my Epic Pen and I could start highlighting vocabulary. I can start bringing two things together. So this bit is relevant to this bit. I can go onto Google Maps. I can show different things. I can, if I'm doing a compare and contrast for FCE or CAE, then I can highlight two things between the pictures. What about these two things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, basically it allows you to do lots of different cool things. You just have to get used to the interface a little bit. You'll find a link to Epic Pen below. It's the one that I use. There are other ones out there on the internet as well. So go to Google, type in um, screen markers, um, virtual whiteboard pens, something along those lines, and you'll see, oh, you'll see different options which are available to you. Okay, with that being said, I hope you found the, uh, this video interesting. If you've got any comments about this particular topic or anything else that you're having difficulty with on, on OBS and online teaching, leave a comment below and I'll try to produce content to help you out.